I believe you. I believe every word that you're saying. There's a giant turtle out there. There's gotta be. So he becomes slightly obsessive. <laughs> this guy doesn't know where any turtles are. Why don't you go cuddle up to your turtle, you fool? To, yeah, I'm gonna take, <laughs> take a second. We'll get there. Welcome. We got uh, all the goodies that you could want. I know you've had some of the bl blueberries. I had seven, which is 35 milligrams. Nice. But I feel like eight's just a rounder number. I brought you this. Oh. If I can get it off my own hair. <laughs> the king. So we got some. Smoking options. I know you said you want to make sure that people know that you smoke all the smoke. It's hard to believe that there's something you could introduce me to that I haven't done before. Are you ready <laughs> for this magic trick? The key to magic is uh, misdirection. Oh my, what's oh, that? Oh! oh. Whoa. Am I to put my lips on the end of this I think thing? I'm just gonna shoot it into your face. Okay, all right. That's, that's what it looked like to me. <laughs> Someone has a towel, right? <laughs> Clean up crew, do we have someone on standby? <coughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I feel like it's only fair that I let you shoot me in the face too. I mean, like... it just seems like the right thing to do. That made me tear up a little bit. You take it full in the face, I gotta tell you. <laughs> yeah, take it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Not only do you get a nice puff of smoke, but a good amount of ash also. Comes into your face, which is nice. <laughs> Hi, I'm Colin Turner, and this is the tale of the Beast of Busco. The year is 1898. The place, Churubusco, Indiana. The man, Oscar Falk, a farmer. Oh God, there's so many butts. <laughs> you started this. He's a real salt of the earth type guy, you know? Likes to eat his wife's biscuits and gravy, and you know, he goes to bed early. He's got this great farm, right? On the farm, there's a seven acre lake. One day, Oscar sees in the lake a giant turtle sunning. You know, gathering the rays of the sun. He immediately like freaks out. He's like, oh my God, there's a giant turtle in my lake. So he runs to his neighbors and he's like, you guys are never gonna believe it. It's the craziest thing. You gotta come down to my lake and see this giant turtle. And everybody's like, yeah, a giant turtle. Give me a break. Next thing you'll be talking about civil rights for everyone. <coughs> 50 years later, Oscar Falk sells his farm to Gail Harris. Gail Harris is a businessman who decides that the lake should be for fishing. These two guys, Aura Blue and Charlie Wilson, I picture them like really like, I don't know, like stereotypical, like Clampett family, kind of redneck just out on the water, being silly together. And then all of a sudden, there pops up out of the water, Oscar the turtle. Like, holy shit! <laughs> Is that a turtle? My God, that's a giant turtle. It's got at least be 500 pounds. Uh, am I seeing things? Are you seeing the same turtle? Because it's big. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are fishermen. So they're used to being like, I'll look at that, I'll look at that fish. Tell you how much it weighs. I'm good at looking at fish. <laughs> I'm the Mac Daddy of looking at fish. Show me a fish right now. 10 pounds. <laughs> 10 pounds, 20 pounds. That's a 75er right there. By God, he's right. 
He just bobs up, doesn't care at all that they're there, and then bobs back down under the water. So Aura Blue and Charlie Wilson go up to Gail Harris and they're like, oh man, you'll never believe it, we saw the biggest turtle, oh my god, dude, it's the giant turtle. Gail Harris was like, I believe you. I believe every word that you're saying. There's a giant turtle out there. There's gotta be. So he becomes slightly obsessive, starts staring out at the lake every night. Presumably his wife is coming out and she's like, stop staring at that lake. I'm lonely. <laughs> Touch me. Why won't you come to bed with me? You're obsessed with the turtle. Like, I can't, I gotta find this turtle. This turtle consumes me. I imagine like two months later, she comes back and she's like, I'm leaving you. And he's like, ah, I'm a cryptozoologist now. This is my life. Go on, go. He goes around, starts telling the neighbors. And this time the neighbors are like, I'm much more progressive than folks of 1898. We're 49ers. <laughs> We're forward thinkers. Or Blue, Charlie Wilson, we all saw it, man. All three of us. We're corroborating each other's story. You don't have to trust me, just take it on my word. Whatever that means. He's got backup, so everybody's like, oh, we believe you this time. People come out to the lake in droves. The United Press International is there. Life Magazine is there. They're both like, hi, I'm here, I'm from United Press International. No big deal, I'm here from Life Magazine. Take that, UPI, you son of a bitch. <laughs> they build a trap out of wooden stakes, chicken wire, and they make it into this big funnel in a section of the lake. And they fill it with chicken livers and all kinds of turtle yum yums. And I imagine Oscar was like, oh my goodness, look at all these turtle yum yums. Dank treats. Dank treats just sitting here waiting for me to nibble on them. I could get down on some chicken gizzards and some chicken livers. I'm a turtle. I like stuff like that. <laughs> Oscar swims into the trap, breaks through the chicken wire like it was paper, and swims into the deep water. I imagine at night he's like in his house going over papers. He's got like a bunch of like stakes in the map of the lake, <laughs> like some kind of serial killer. His whole family's left at this point. They can't deal with this turtle madness <laughs> anymore. And so he's doing everything he can to prove that Oscar exists. He makes a periscope. Periscope busts his eye, it leaks. It gets stuck on the bottom. It doesn't work. He gets a dive suit. Oh wait, two hours later, my dive suit's leaking. He gets a second dive suit. After six hours, oh, my air pump's clogged. I guess I can't use this dive suit that I spent my small fortune on. <laughs> Things continually go wrong for Gail Harris. Finally, Gail is, he sits up in bed. He's like, I gotta do it. I gotta do whatever it takes even if it means producing a body. Boom, boom, boom. Oscar will die before he gets away from me. <laughs> Gail Harris turns into this obsessive monster. He starts throwing bombs into the lake. This is before PETA and stuff probably, so. Everybody was like, well, you know, it's his lake, so if he wants to bomb it, you know, what are, he can pay for the dynamite. <laughs> we just come to watch the turtle pop out of the water, honestly. So finally he has to come up with his final solution. He's gonna drain Falk Lake. No. He's gonna drain Falk Lake by attaching a pump to his tractor which pumps into a valley above Folk Lake in order to completely drain the Seven Acre Lake. When people hear about it, they're like, oh my God, did you hear? I totally heard. Of course, everyone's talking about the turtle. Everyone's going to Folk Lake. Are you going? Of course. Well, of course I'm going to Folk Lake, duh. 
I'm like, of course, duh. <laughs> uh, Gail Harris pumps that sucker all the way. I imagine he's like leaning back over his tractor, just cackling like, ah, ha, 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 I'll have that turtle no matter what it takes. <laughs> and he's pumped it all the way down to a single acre at a depth of five feet. A duck lands on top of the water. It swims for a second and then a reptilian head shoots out of the water and eats the duck whole. Oscar's like, sweet. You know, it was a rough day until I got that duck. The magic of Oscar the turtle rings through in this moment because he manages to get away from all this stuff. The pump clogs with mud. The tractor's ruined. All of a sudden there's a halt in draining the water from the lake. So, he decides, Gail Harris decides, that he's gonna use the last of his money to dredge the entire lake. He goes to the guy with the crane, he's like, are you the guy with the crane? And he's like, definitely, I'm the guy with the crane. You need a crane? I got your cranes, bro. I'm talking cranes, I got ditch witches, anything you need. <laughs> I don't know what a ditch witch is, but it sounds like a machine that you dig something with. All right. I'll buy it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I needed that validation. So they presumably hook a big like claw or something and drag it across the bottom of the lake and uh, turns up nothing. So the townspeople are starting to be like, this guy doesn't know where any turtles are. And Gail Harris, like, he's probably getting more decrepit. His clothes are starting to fall apart. He just smells bad. He's unshaven. He's not getting his regular biscuits and gravy for breakfast. He's starting to get thin and sallow. When he walks through the streets, people are like, you turtle idiot. Why don't you go cuddle up to your turtle, you fool? And then he sees like his ex-wife who's now with like the richest guy in town. <laughs> and, there, and then she like scampers by and she's like, my life is so much better than when I was married to the turtle man. And then Gail Harris just like weeps and sings sad show tunes. I once looked for a turtle. The turtle was inside. <laughs> In December of 1949, Gail Harris comes out, presumably on his front porch. I don't know who was there to listen. <laughs> like the four diehard people who are like, we believe. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We want to see the giant turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Listen guys, I want to officially call off, you know, I want to say I had a good time hunting the turtle and I feel good about it and I'm not stopping because I can't find him. I just feel like it's, you know, time to stop and so I'm going to stop and, you know, and uh, he decided to call off the search December that year and then the Beast of Busco was never heard from again. Some believe, they're like, I think when he dredged the lake that he drained it too far and Oscar got stuck in the mud and died there. That's the sad version. But we can do the doo -doo 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 <laughs> mega happy ending, which is that all the lakes in Indiana are connected by channels underneath the ground. So every time Oscar got in trouble, every time he was like, whoa, they're dropping in grenades. These humans are crazy and they're total dicks. <laughs> <laughs> and he has to swim out into another neighboring lake. But uh, yeah, I like to believe that he got out, or she got out, and just had a lot of like giant babies, you know, and they're all living in Lake Erie with a house of mermaids that rides um, giant turtles into war. <laughs> Who are they battling? Other mermaid cultures, but they're the seahorse riders. <laughs> oh, okay. They're the seahorse riders, because Bobby, I assume that's yeah. who fights the turtles. Although, now I'm like mixing fresh water with saltwater creatures, so I, I don't know. Look it up, I'm sure it's a mystery. The mermaids of Lake Erie. <laughs>